I'm speaking with your name. Please. Yeah, my name's Ann Wright. And Ann, uh, tell us a little bit about how you happen to be at the conference today. Well, I am here as a former U.S. government employee. I used to be in the uh, 29 years as a U.S. military officer, retired as a colonel, and. 16 years as a U.S. diplomat and was one of three U.S. diplomats who resigned in opposition to the war in Iraq back in March of 2003. Why was it you resigned? Well, I resigned because I felt that the policy of the United States to invade and occupy an oil-rich Arab Muslim country was going to be a disaster for not only Iraq but the, the countries of the Middle East and for the United States and ultimately for the world. And I did not want to be associated with that that policy. Were you working uh, on issues involving that part of the world? No, I was, uh, at the time I was in Mongolia. I was the deputy ambassador in Mongolia. However, I, I had opened the U.S. Embassy in Kabul, Afghanistan in December of 2001 and I was well uh, versed in uh, what had not gone on in Afghanistan in terms of not a lot of U.S. military, not a lot of economic development funds that were already starting to be funneled someplace and we then later learned they were uh, going to be used in the war on Iraq. So, did you have information other than what was available to the general public uh, regarding our invasion of Iraq or policy towards Iraq? Nope, didn't have any other uh, information. In fact, what we were being given uh, at our U.S. embassies around the world as the rationale for the invasion uh, was uh, unclassified and it, it matched exactly what Washington was putting out uh, from from the State Department. Uh, no, no extra information about weapons of mass destruction or anything like that. So how is it that you were able to conclude then that we should not invade Iraq when so many uh, office holders and politicians are telling us that they didn't have information that would allow them to reach that conclusion? Well, they uh, they are lying. They did have information and it uh, completely undercut their uh, the basis on which they were telling the American public that they wanted to invade Iraq. They knew perfectly well there were no weapons of mass destruction and they purposely, uh, in my opinion, um, they purposely um, lied to the American public. Now you say you didn't have any information that wasn't available to the public, but you did have um, experience working in international relations. Do you feel that that gives your voice more credibility than that of the average person on the street when you talk about our policy in the area? Well, it it seems to carry some weight with uh, with people that you talk to that you you have had experience, and um, I mean I've been involved with the U.S. government for eight, eight, eight presidential administrations, starting back with Lyndon Johnson during the Vietnam War. And I've seen a, a lot and been involved in a lot of U.S. government programs and activities that many people were uh, not themselves particularly, uh, that, that they didn't agree with, and I was a part of it. So I've, I, can, I can speak uh, with uh, a sense of experience um, having been part of the system. And I think people do appreciate that, 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 that people with my experience are willing to speak out. And, and then, I mean, it's up to every individual American as to who they, whose voice they kind of put a little more trust in than, than others. And I've been very honored that it seems like a lot of people do um, evaluate what I say and think that it's an important voice to be heard. How was your uh, resignation and your speaking out subsequently, how has that been received by your colleagues uh, who work in international relations? Well, I have got 400 emails right after I resigned saying you did the right thing. This, this policy of invasion and occupation is going to be a disaster for the United States and for Iraq. Uh, I have not received any hate mail from anybody, <laughs> which is remarkable because so many people in, in all over I mean, that are speaking out against the war, particularly in the early days, we're getting a lot of really nasty stuff. Um, even when I go on like Fox, Fox News, uh, or not news, but the Bill O'Reilly show and the Sean Hannity show, um, I mean, I definitely hold my own with both of those guys to the extent that the last time I was on Bill O'Reilly, he, he said, cut, cut her mic, cut the colonel's mic, because I had the nerve to stand up to him. and, and uh, say, well, I've, I've had experience in these things, I've served in the military, I've been a diplomat. What have you done, Bill? And um, 
that's when he cut the mic. <laughs> the polls would tell us that U.S. public opinion has significantly weakened in terms of support for the president's policy in Iraq. Do you feel that what you have done, and people like you, have played a role in changing that public opinion? Well, I think we've played a, a small role in it. Uh, I think really what's happening is that the American public themselves are seeing for their for their own selves uh, what uh, uh, what's going on, and they're making up their own mind based on what they're reading in the newspaper, what what limited stuff they're seeing on TV, and are saying, after four years, this this isn't going right, something something screwy, and then the whole issue of weapons of mass destruction is now well known uh, that they didn't exist. Uh, there still seems to be a little bit of a problem with the no, 25 percent of the people that say the war in Iraq should still be going on. But there's, there's still, they believe that Vice President Cheney's comment of a connection between Saddam Hussein and 9-11 is there, which is really kind of disturbing that you think that at this stage uh, we still have people that are so gullible for the administration. What do you think we should do now in Iraq? Well, I think we need to uh, be taking our troops out of Iraq. That as, as long as the troops are there, the violence will continue, and they will be the targets of much of the violence that's there. They themselves are not doing anything. Their presence is not doing anything, in my opinion, to resolve the issues that are there. <clears throat> their presence has, has facilitated um, um, situations that that uh, have just torn the country apart. And I think we need to remove our troops, let the Iraqis determine if they want further international security assistance. And uh, as long as America's there, many countries will not volunteer to help um, the Iraqis. So we need to get out so that a different crew can, can be invited in by the Iraqis if they want them. Based upon your experience, what should we be doing about Iran right now? Well, dialogue for sure, and lessening the the aggressive uh, posture of uh, the Bush administration. As if if George Bush continues to threaten uh, Iran, then you can be sure that they will take steps to ensure their defense. And I think this whole issue of the nat the nuclear energy program that the Bush administration is talking about as a nuclear weapons program is a defensive measure. Uh, by the Iranians who have seen two of their neighbors being invaded and occupied by the, uh, uh, the United States and when they themselves are on the list of the next ones to be hit in this axis of evil, uh, they, it's their, their re national security uh, responsibility to defend themselves against uh, aggressive behavior by other countries. And George Bush has just given them the golden opportunity to do, to do things that the probably the Iranian public is not particularly keen on, being the brunt of international um, criticism for um, not allowing inspection of their nuclear programs. So um, the Bush policies have to be restrained. Diplomacy, speaking to the Iranians, is the way we ought to go about this.